Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon everyone. So welcome to the first episode of PGSS podcast or postgraduate student slash staff sharing. So with us here today for our very, very first episode of the year, we have Sister Nur Amira binti Abdul Alam who is a dietitian from the Department of Nutrition Sciences, Kulia of Light Health Sciences, IIUM. So thank you so much for joining us today, Sister Amira. Okay, welcome. So for today's session, it's simple. Our discussion today will totally be about food, about meal, and about Ramadan, and how we connect all of that towards being a healthier version of us. So before we pers- before we proceed with uh, the discussion, the main topic of today, um, I would like to ask perhaps Sister Amira if you can share with us uh, a bit a bit about yourself as well as maybe your experience or personal experience with regards to being a dietitian. Okay, so Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you, Brother Faiz, for the introduction. So, um, uh, first of all, let's start. Lah. Uh, you can just call me uh, Madam Amira, okay, uh, working at Kulia of Allied Health Sciences, Kuantan Campus. Lah. Oh, okay, so, um, apa, work as a dietitian, ni, uh, I've joined IIUM since 2010. So, I believe it's almost 14 years with IIUM. Um, as a dietitian, uh, for everyone uh, to know, dietitian, actually, we uh, mainly deal with Food. Of course, everyone knows that we deal with food. However, we specifically uh, deal with uh, sick people, how to eat. Okay? Oh. So, uh, for sick people, uh, what is the best way to eat? Let's say if you have diabetes, how to eat so that you can control your blood sugar. Uh, like oh. that. Or, or if, you have motor, if you have motor vehicle accident, if you suddenly one day you got a car crash, motorbike crash, how to eat so that it enhances your recovery. So basically, that's uh, mostly what I did. And uh, I practice at our Kulia. We have our own clinic diet. You can join a physical clinic face to face, or we also have online clinic like this. Uh, or also, we are practicing at our IIUM teaching hospital, which is located nearby the Quantan campus. I see. I think that's all for now, Brother Faiz. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sister Amira. Oh, you have a really long experience with being a dietitian. So I believe every tips, every advice that we have today should be backed up by experience of facts, right? Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. And of course, today as well, I have my co-host, Brother Muaz Abdullah. Brother Muaz, you want to introduce yourself a bit? Ah, okay. <laughs> Bismillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muaz bin Abdullah and currently I'm one of the secretary of uh, postgraduate student societies and I'm also the one of the people that uh, organizing this podcast. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, uh, my background is only on thick and thick, but today I will try to I will try to enjoy this thing and in order to add some some new knowledge. Uh, MashaAllah. I, I thought you were a content creator. <laughs> also, <laughs> but but not as famous like Dr. Ashraf Rostam, not, <laughs> uh, not like famous uh, as him. Just a little bit. <laughs> It's okay. Thank you so much, Brother Muaz, for the brief introduction. So today, I believe, like, you know, we're we're in the middle of Ramadan. I, you know, to be fair, I have no idea why we do this podcast, our first podcast during Ramadan. It's quite challenging, you know, because basically we are all fasting. We're all trying to uh, keep up mentally and physically with our chores and our works. And of course, Ramadan being... Uh, being the one period of time where we as Muslims we are unable to eat, we, not, not unable, we are obligated, right, to yes. not eat, to not drink, and of course to abstain ourselves from things that will break our fast or simply do some things, do things that are sinful. So, of course, what happened is that, and this is something that I observe in a lot of my friends, Ramadan. I will be fit. Ramadan, I will lose 10 kilograms. Uh, in fact, 
uh, my family, right? Uh, there's a challenge. Whoever lost the most weight get a thousand bucks. Really? So that, yeah, wow. yeah, to that extent, wow. you know, because 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 Ramadan is like, like when else you are uh, being in uh, being given incentives to starve yourself, right? So, so today we're going to learn. <laughs> we're going to learn about how to perhaps do it healthily, and perhaps we like to learn some tips and tricks as well as maybe bust some myths with regards to eating during Ramadan as well. So let's proceed with the first issue is can weight loss be healthy for everyone during Ramadan? Okay. All right. So uh, can uh, people lose weight during Ramadan? Uh, I believe that kind of question, right? Okay, so um, I think uh, to answer the question, uh, I have to say it's it's tricky, okay? <laughs> because uh, if you ask me from my own personal experience, or uh, I, if we look at the evidence on the literature evidence, uh, it's actually uh, Ramadan fasting. Of course, yes, we have a group of people who can lose their weight. Uh, I believe can win the the ten thousand one thousand uh, like brother <laughs> is mentioned just now, okay. <laughs> but you have to remember, we also have people who unable or even increase their weight throughout Ramadan, okay. So we have mixed uh, result of people when fasting in Ramadan. But if you want to ask me, uh, can uh, weight loss be a goal during Ramadan? Uh, I think the answer is yes, but. Of course, it depends on how you conduct yourself with food, how you conduct yourself with food, okay? Uh, your relationship with food, that will determine uh, the outcome at the end of Ramadan. MashaAllah. I'm, I'm really interested with regards to the the ones who added their weight during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how, how does that work, actually? <laughs> like, okay. you're supposed to be... Yeah be uh, losing more weight right during Ramadan. Mm, correct, correct. If we think we, we, we don't eat since uh, sahur until uh, dawn, until uh, iftar, right? So we only have like the night night time only for eating. Seems like we have shorter time to eat, okay? But um, um, uh, when there's one study, they look at uh, people, uh, Muslims that's fasting during Ramadan. Okay, um, they, there will be people who lose weight, uh, significantly can lose weight, uh, and there are also people who increase weight. And if they look at region, okay, region, whether in the uh, uh, um, Middle East, in the Southeast Asia, like our, our uh, uh, area, um, there are also different uh, effects uh, to these people on Ramadan. Okay, but they can conclude that uh, it actually depends on the cultural uh, cultural practice during iftar that will lead to uh, uh, increment in weight. Okay, so for example, I asked Brother Faiz, Brother Muaz. Okay, so usually when you have your your dinner, let's say uh, outside Ramadan period, your dinner outside Ramadan. Okay, so what will you, uh, Brother Muaz, have outside Ramadan for your dinner? Usually, I have something like um, rice, like uh, chicken rice. Chicken rice, nasi ayam, for example. What yeah. about Brother Faiz? Oh, I I eat whatever my wife cook. Huh. So I I don't dare to like I don't dare to to today we eat this. Yeah, but generally it's rice and chicken. Rice yeah. and chicken. Rice okay. And do you regularly have sweet drinks for dinner? Yes. Brother Muaz, uh, 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 oh. uh, 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 no, uh, but Brother Faiz yes. uh, sometimes have uh, uh, sweet drinks for dinner. Okay, we have uh, rice, chicken, and you have uh, sometimes sweet drinks, right? And uh, what about, do you have together with your dinner outside Ramadan, outside Ramadan with a little bit of like uh, a sweet dessert, do you have like this samosa, murtabak, usually for your dinner? Do you have that? I usually have, uh, you know, the durian uh, potong ice cream. The ice cream potong durian. But you have it every day, right? The fact is? Yeah. On, or every day? 
Everyday. Everyday. Every day. Renovate is every day. Okay. Hey, you go you go to Speed Mart, you buy a whole box of it, you know, like there's like plenty of that for only six. Ice cream. Of course you, yeah. So okay. uh, you're going to indulge on that. <laughs> okay. What about us? What about Radu Muaz? Do you have like a sweet dessert during your dinner um, every day? No. Not necessarily no, because no. because we yeah. we are students and I'm trying to save my budget <laughs> and only what buy what, what what is needed. Uh, I'm only yeah. buying uh like nasi ayam gepo something like that. Yes, correct. Uh, chicken rice and just only that. Water. And some I'm just water. drinking plain water. Just yes, kind of. <laughs> correct. Okay. So so uh, uh okay uh, uh we we uh we take the 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 story from Brother Muaz lah. Ah, better. <laughs> Okay, so typically, usually, we said typical student eating pattern yes. is like Brother Muaz, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what happened your dinner during Ramadan? Does it look like more extra or like your usual dinner? Yeah, uh, sometimes, I think in Ramadan, because in Ramadan, we are students, we are hunting. We are hunting for the free foods. <laughs> uh, <laughs> every right. day, every day, we will go to the mosque, uh, to the... What do you call surau? Uh, we, we we go to usually we go to the mosque Musala. for uh for free food, and uh, we just take uh, what it uh, what it has like kuih muih and like a yes. dessert, uh yeah, and sometimes green. sometimes at the mosque they didn't serve the sky juice the plain water, so I by hook or by crook I need to take the one glass of syrup like that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so so yes. so to answer uh, Brother Faiz's question, how come we are not eating at the during the day? But how come yes. there are a group of people who can increase their weight during Ramadan? Okay, so that is one occasion during iftar. So we actually been eating more than our usual day. Okay, that is for iftar. Then my next question: What about more? Uh, what are the <laughs> usual food for your more? Oh, uh, Brother Faiz. <laughs> What is your more <laughs> usually? My more usually is whatever is left from iftar that I don't okay, finish. Okay. Yes, yes, that's how people usually did. Uh, yeah, Brother Muaz, yes. if you go to mosque, what usually mosque uh, served for more? Uh, like porridge. Uh, what we call it? bubur? Uh, bubur kacang. Porridge. Yeah, lontong. Porridge night. Okay. Yes, uh, lontong. Sometimes like they that. have like some some uh, a mosque sometimes uh, nasi biryani. I found. Oh, wow. Nasi uh, for more. Yes. Uh, sometimes <laughs> they have like a fried noodle. Yeah, which, which mosque is that? <laughs> Somewhere in Kuantan. Uh -huh. wow. okay. okay. So, so okay. Then, uh, that's, uh, in your night, outside Ramadan time, do you usually have this fried noodle at 10 a at 10 p.m.? No, okay. Then? okay. Uh, very rare lah, unless like uh, uh, you have to stay up and then you go out to mama with your friend, guys. Yes. Okay, mm. so uh, uh, and then after after you more after the trawe, uh, usually we go immediately go to sleep. Yes. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, basically it's actually those lifestyle that we have during Ramadan. Okay, so uh, we uh, we eat late at night and we go to sleep immediately. Right, so those are the lifestyle that uh, can contribute more to increment of weight after Ramadan. <sighs> so I think uh, that's how things happen, lah, brother Faiz. So sad. It's okay. Never mind. Aba. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, sister, for explaining to us how sometimes our goals are futile. You know, <laughs> but regardless, right? I know that for certain people, right, they really love to use Ramadan as this, like I said just now, this motivation, this incentives, right? Because like, uh, you you you're fasting, you know, you're not eating, you're not drinking, might as well just do some weight, you know, might as well go go go, you know, do some do some jogging and might as well go so for some gym as well, right? So I saw people who like. Uh, for example, they are like 75 kilos. So they want, by the end of Ramadan, they want to lose 10, 15 kilos, you know, that much. So I was wondering, because I what I read from general articles is that it it is safe. I mean, like, it is safe for you to lose weight 
only a few kilograms. But I just want to com- I just want to ask Sister Amira here how much weight loss should be considered to be safe to be realistic uh, to achieve during Ramadan. Okay, that is a very good concern. That is a very good question because when we want to lose weight, the first thing that we will talk to our client is how much that you want. Okay, that is a very critical first question that we have to ask because uh, when we set unrealistic weight loss unrealistic goal that will make the client uh, um, uh, apa, not uh, disappointed and uh, not satisfied all right mm-hmm. so uh, if we talk about healthy weight loss how much to lose um, is actually we only recommend people to lose five to ten percent of their current weight five to Ten percent of the mm-hmm. current weight. Oh. So let's say if you take that ten percent, if the person is eighty kilo, then meaning that uh, the person need to reduce eight kilo uh, within uh, six months. Six mm. months. Yes. Only Ramadan. Ramadan is. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay. So you have to know if you ask your friend or your family members who are currently overweight or obese. To lose weight is very difficult, all right? If you ever uh, ask people around. So we cannot ask them to lose 10 kilo in one month. It is impossible. impossible. Okay. So when we say to them things that is impossible, then they, be, they will become demotivated. Okay. Ah. So we always encourage slow weight loss. Okay. So uh, that is for six month uh, target. If you want to talk about weekly target, we only recommend 0.5 to 1 kilo in one week. 0.5 to 1 kilo in one mm-hmm. week. Okay. So uh, it's almost that uh, uh, between that uh, that recommendation, uh, 0.5 to 1 kilo in one week. Okay. And um, we also recommend people not to weigh themselves every day. Cannot. Don't weigh yourself every day. Pada Mas, do you? <laughs> so, you have to weigh yourself uh, once a week only. Ah, uh, once a week. Okay. Uh, Brother Faiz, do you have that weighing scale at your home? Yeah, it's in front of my main door. Ah, so every so day every... before you go to I I U M, you step on it. Tomorrow, yeah. step on it again. You go, uh, you go to IUM, you step. You come back from IUM, you step. Two times a day. Uh, so you see how much men, how much weight you lost during your trip to IUM. <laughs> okay, so uh, we only recommend people to uh, weigh themselves once a week. Okay. Once a week. So why? Why uh, this is so? Because, uh, like I mentioned just now, to lose. Okay, when we want to lose weight, that, that we say that we are now obese, we are now overweight. What do you want to get rid from your body? Now, uh, you want to make yourself lighter, then. What do you want to get rid actually? We, Maybe which, I will we, fat. Correct, correct. We're the more so actually we want to reduce our body fat. Okay, yes. reducing body fat is. Um, quite difficult it has certain metabolism pathway that uh, bo- our body will go through okay so uh, once a week is a realistic uh, realistic uh, outcome lah, uh, timeline for that fat to show some uh, reduction if you wait every day usually if the if the uh, scale going down it actually just your body water or uh, because you eat extra then you gain Or if you go to toilet, then you lose some a bit. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, uh, we just wait once a week uh, to see the changes. All right. So uh, that is uh, um, now how, how much to lose weight now? Okay. So I think like uh, I have okay, some questions. Want. I think also uh, basically we need to set one day, like uh, Sunday or Monday. Yes. To, uh, to wait. Correct. So better you make it like uh, uh like example on on Saturday morning. Uh, you wear light clothing, light clothing. You don't wear your jeans together with your jacket. So you wear like light clothing and then you step on it. 
uh, example every after subuh on the Saturday. So next week after subuh on the Saturday also. We try to make it like the same within same timeline. Oh, I right. need to ask my wife to hide the weight. Uh. <laughs> to hide the because skin. sometimes, when the bar is, uh, people yeah. easily get motivated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we said, we said just now, uh, we want to lose ten percent six months. How do you want to go for the six month journey if you easily demotivated every day, every day, every day? So pity to people, lah. Oh, okay, then that's so. Uh, okay, then I wonder, right? If 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 okay, the safe weight loss should be ten ten fifteen percent six months, or maybe what? One week is like zero point five kilo, right? Half kilo, correct. Half kilo. So, if for example, someone lost like within a week four kilos, five kilos. What's the issue there? I mean, like during Ramadan, I'm, I'm asking mm. specifically. What's the mm. issue there usually? Mm. Okay, so uh, uh, weight loss during Ramadan, uh, it of course it can be depends on how people eat. How some people do exercise during Ramadan, can so uh, they sometimes can achieve more than uh, half to one kilo in a week. Uh, however, uh, lots of uh, research and finding shows that. Uh, people who lose weight during Ramadan uh, because of not eating, because we are not eating, easily get back to their baseline weight after Ramadan. Oh. Mm, okay. So same goes if we talk about uh, weight loss uh, during the the usual non-Ramadan days, the usual uh, uh, day throughout our year. Um, the hardest thing to to maintain is to to sustain to istiqomah with your practice and sustain the weight loss. Example, from 80 kilo, you already achieve 55 kilo. The hardest part is to maintain that 55 kilo. Rapid weight loss makes your weight maintenance much harder. Mm. Mm. Okay, Because you lose weight rapidly and suddenly you have to sustain it. So it's much better if you slowly reduce your weight. Mm. So it's all about Sustainable development. I would say sustainable. <laughs> I, I put it like it's the coma. It's the coma. It's the coma. Yeah, yeah. Mashallah. It's the coma. I yeah. say it's the coma yes. in losing weight. Yes, but where the fact is, where the more is, is sometimes it's not just about weight. Um, when we try to diet, when we try to lose weight, uh, it's beyond the weight itself. Um, if you have a better weighing skill that also measure your body fat, your body muscle, that is much better. Sometimes, uh, let's say if we talk about bodybuilder, like athlete or bodybuilder, they can be 80 kilo as well. But do you think they have same muscle percentage with you? No, definitely. No muscle. Uh, nope. yes. So our people that the one that 80 kilo, I believe they have more fat. Correct? Mm, okay. So because uh, uh there's many patient uh, client that uh, uh encounter with me, uh they, they said that uh, I have diet for three months, but why my weight not coming down? Then I say it's okay, although your weight is not coming down, it's still at 80 kilo. But when we measure your, we say, we call it body composition. Your body composition, your fat percentage coming down. Your muscle percentage is now going up. That is very good. Okay. Mm. So um, don't worry if you have your weight sounds like big, but get yourself tested. What is actually the composition inside? How, how do you get tested? Mm, uh, I believe some our gym center have that body composition uh, device, oh. or you can just as easy as go to Shopee uh, buy those weighing scale, the digital weighing scale with fat composition. Uh, Shopee also have that one. Mm, okay, then time to look for Shopee and Lazada. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, after 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 this after this. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> So it's it's not about just losing weight. It's also about getting the ideal 
composition, the ideal build that you want, right? Correct. So if I'm going for like lean, I need to have, I don't want the muscle to you know grow. I just want the fat to lose, something like that. But yeah. is it possible actually like for you to lose fat without growing muscle? When we lose fat, we uh, it's okay to uh, to grow muscle, Brother Faiz. Muscle uh-huh. is those things that we want to keep to our body. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, it's okay. That's why I said uh, to my client, it's okay if your weight does not come down because your muscle is increasing. Because when we look at more studies, we said uh, muscle is more beneficial to our body. Uh, when we are getting older, uh, muscle is the one that protective to us. Uh, when we are fasting, one month fasting, uh, it's actually muscle. Having more muscle helps us to sustain more energy. Mm. Muscle, uh, 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 if I can explain to you in easier way, muscle is the bank for our energy as well. It's, in, uh, it's not just liver, muscle as well. It stores energy for us to sustain during this uh, fasting period. Mm. Mm. I think like... Oh, well, that that's good. That's a good segue to my next question, actually. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, the I think like one thing that really I say make it difficult uh, to go, to do this uh, to that to have a that to have a to conduct. I, I I'm sorry. Uh, basically, to commit to a diet during Ramadan is of course trying to balance between the input that you get as well as the kind of energy that you want to you know exude right so if for example my work is mainly you know in front of a screen or just simply like in front of books then perhaps like people will assume like oh you don't need to eat that much you know say you don't need that much energy right Uh, but then again Uh, if you, for example, you're traveling a lot, you're doing a lot of heavy weights, and suddenly people say that you have to eat a lot, but then, but then, right, there's always this struggle between like how much you should eat, and so that you can sustain proper energy level throughout Ramadan. Because let me let me just tell, let me just say or share here that I believe this Ramadan has been one of the most challenging for me because. Uh, especially I, I've just started driving. So, you know, the energy level, I'm always pondering on what kind of ifta or sahur I should have in order for me to be able to drive, you know, every day for one hour, two hour. So perhaps if I can ask Sister Amira, say what kind of adjustments that we could do so that we can promote for weight loss, but at the same time, we can maintain optimum energy level throughout this Ramadan period? Okay. Uh, I think uh, to answer this, I think I have to answer back the situation that I mentioned the earlier period whereby people fasting but also can gain weight. Uh. Yeah, then when, then we go to how to sustain energy like Brother Faiz asked. Kan? All right. So um, in order not to become the second group of people during Ramadan whereby at the end they gain weight, Okay, mm. so uh, first of all, make sure you control what did you eat during your iftar. Okay, um, I try experimenting on myself. I know this is not a good uh, sharing that experimenting with own self, but uh, it's also it's also come together with the evidence lah. Okay, so if uh, during years ago when uh, of course I'm already lean, but I just try. Okay, during iftar. I just take like usual, but the more I said, uh, rice, chicken, and some vegetables. No sweet drinks, no kuih, no s- sweet dessert. And uh, at the end of Ramadan, uh, my weight come down like two to three kilos. Ooh. Okay. So if uh, those listener that uh, wish to have the balance of Ramadan to get at least uh, some weight loss, I challenge you to go for your iftar with your usual dinner plate. One plate of your rice, chicken, vegetables, no sweet drinks, no kuih, no dessert. That's the problem. You know, Bazaar Ramadan always have kuih, always have sweet drinks. Yes. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, But yeah. Have you tried? Have you tried like uh, uh like uh, uh that um uh, if you just uh if start with one whole plate, did you find you still get that satiety? You still have that fullness? Is it? Have you tried that? Yes. 
Yes, actually. With that brand of Yes. Without I mean, think, without uh, that chain doll. I think we just need to. That. Yes, we just we just need to restrict ourselves. We just need to restrict ourselves. We want to be healthy. Want to be healthy. We want to save our money. <laughs> you want to save our budget, as, especially as a student. Money is a motivation. Especially as Correct. a student. Uh, <laughs> I think we just need to reduce our our budget, a minimumly. Mm. Uh, just yes, buying the the chicken and rice and only that. Uh, we just need to, to drink sky juice. <laughs> <laughs> sky juice, yeah, uh, cold lah, cold. Not, you want cold sky juice yeah. as a student nowadays is hot in Kuantan, kan? So you just go with cold <laughs> yeah. sky juice, one plate of rice, and that's enough. Okay, so uh, it's kind of hard where the fight is, right? Yeah. Uh, man, I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm shivering listening, you know, no sweet, <laughs> no, no sweet drinks. Hmm. Oh. Okay, so uh, uh, that is one thing during your iftar, and then uh, during your uh, mori. Okay, mori is supposed to be like your uh, slight snack, just one like snack. Like uh, uh, during your your usual days, you have this like one coffee, coffee o, coffee, mm -hmm. not that cream whatsoever. <laughs> coffee o with a dip of biscuit, cream cracker biscuit, three pieces example. That is how light your mori should be. So if yes. brother Fa you have leftover of iftar, leftover of iftar food. Example, you have leftover of curry pop. You just take one curry pop or two curry pop with plain water. That is enough. Oh, no. Okay. So yes. if not, you will be on the second group of people at the end of Ramadan will gain weight. <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, actually, I, actually, I have some kind of... I would, I'm just wondering, is it... Or only me or other papers also uh, encounter this thing. Usually, uh, after we in outside of Ramadan, after we eat the dinner, sometimes uh, just like six o'clock or seven o'clock, and at the night we didn't feel we don't feel hungry until the next morning. Uh, but in Ramadan, in Ramadan, after even after we full uh, taking our iftars. But uh, after travel, uh, just like at 10 o'clock or 11, we tend to feel hungry. Uh, we tend to feel hungry and I'm mm -hmm. just wondering why. Because uh, we just ate our iftar uh, at our 7 o'clock and uh, mm -hmm. our, we eat rice, we eat chicken, we eat uh, fruits, we eat uh, kuih mui. Mm -hmm. But why we are still hungry after travel? But outside of the Ramadan, mm -hmm. we didn't feel hungry at that time, at that particular time. So <laughs> is okay. there any uh, signs? That you can uh, uh, okay, so uh, I have I have to answer lah. Okay, uh, the first one is uh, you usually inshallah during Ramadan we will go for taraweh, right? Yes. Ah, okay. yeah. So taraweh, taraweh as simple as eight rakaat. Oh, inshallah you go for twenty yeah. rakaat. So uh, usually I always uh, 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 encourage people to go for taraweh uh, and consider taraweh as part of your physical activity during Ramadan. It's very important to to go for taraweh because that is the 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 best physical activity. But of course, we do taraweh not to exercise lah. We do taraweh yes. for the uh, the barakat, the, uh, enjoy the Ramadan. Of course lah. That is just the bonus part. It is also considered as physical activity. Okay. So after we done those uh, 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 the the uh, uh, pergerakan, the the movement in solat for uh, eight rakaat for twenty rakaat. Uh, of course, our body will demand some food. Mm. Okay, uh, we need to hydrate back our cell to drink water because of that. Uh, uh, it's not vigorous, it's repetitive action up and down, up and down. So, our, it's like we do stretching, it's like uh, the same effect of we are doing yoga. So, uh, of course, our body did crave something, but th that's I said, we can allow you to take more, but not in abundance. Okay, just oh. go for light food. Okay, so uh, that uh, that's how to answer the question. Nah, um, however, as we discuss this uh, change in how we eat during Ramadan, uh, it's kind of like challenging, kan? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if if you remember, if Brother Faiz, Brother Muaz, remember at the early, I mentioned just now, um, how was our relationship with food? 
I like uh, for people. I like people to ponder what is your relationship with food. Do you eat just uh, to ensure you your body have enough energy so you can perform solat so you can go and do your work, or you eat to indulge to indulge? Oh. Have you ever pondered on that? Okay, so yes. I I can see many people can be very motivated, very strong people, very uh, uh, um. Uh, we say, "Ilah, uh, very strong people, motivated." Again, however, when it comes to food, <laughs> uh, so um, uh, I think uh, uh, people, Ilah, uh, uh, our IIM student, understand that uh, we have to um, taper down our nerves, our nerves towards uh, seeing the the bad thing, to control our eyes. I think people understand, especially IIM student. But this is food. It's also kind of enough that we have to control. Do you agree? Yes. Deep. Ag hashtag deep. Existential crisis. But the thing is, uh, uh, how can, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I mean, I mean, how can we, we control ourselves to not get the heavy food? Some things like, so, sometimes after after I'm eating just uh one or two curry puff, sometimes I I think it's still not not what we call tak cukup, jadi not enough. Not ah, enough. yes. No. Okay, okay. So now how to control your uh, now? Yes. So I have to become ustazah now. Okay. <laughs> ustazah, begin. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, okay, when uh, during the iftar time, of course, our body is so deprived of food. Okay, that's where now, that's where our now, uh, uh, we really strong urgency want to eat this and that. Okay, so um, you have to uh, use your uh, uh, realistic and you have to think. Okay, usually if I eat this one one box of nasi, one box of rice, usually it will be enough. You have to trust your logical thinking. This is enough. Okay? Because I asked just now again, what do you usually have for your uh, before Ramadan? Just follow that one. Inshallah, it is enough. Okay? Because your stomach size is always the same before Ramadan and during Ramadan. So if before Ramadan, you can feel full with that. And during Ramadan, inshallah, you will be full as well. Okay? So you have to trust your logical thinking. Okay, don't indulge. You go to bazaar. Oh, mataba, I want. Uh, uh, this one I want. I cendol I want. I syrup I want. Okay, because that is your nafs. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that is number one. Number two, how we want to make sure uh, eat this much already is actually uh, uh, full. Uh, you have it enough, kan? Ready to ask, kan? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, there are a few tips that I can give you. Number one, uh, when azan for maghrib. You uh you break your fast with uh like sunnah with kurma of course with dates and then some sweet drinks some sweet drinks and then you go for maghrib prayer. Have you tried? Have both of you tried that kind of uh uh, uh practice? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. you go for maghrib prayer after you settle maghrib prayer, then you sit down for your dinner for your uh, uh main main course lah. Okay. Um, have you compared? If you have Margaret prayer, then you go for your main course. And if you uh, break your fast, eat everything, 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 and then you go Margaret prayer. Which one is you will eat more? You go for Margaret first or you go for Margaret later on? Margaret first. Eh, if, eat more, Margaret later. Eat more, Margaret later. Can? All right. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, that's why I recommend we eat small, break our fast first, we stop, uh, go for Margaret prayer, and then we continue eating after Margaret prayer. The scientific uh, explanation is um, our brain, uh, when we, when our stomach feel full, can okay? more asked us just now, can okay? how to feel full? Uh, we will feel full when our brain detect is already full. Mm. Brain need to send signal. Okay, this is full. Okay, mm. for that signal to be delivered, for that communication to be delivered, it takes like fifteen to twenty minutes. 
for mm -hmm. the brain to detect. Mm -hmm. Legging, there's oh. some legging. Like That's oh. the size. Ah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, um, if you eat like uh, uh, azan, then you eat kurma, you eat kueh, you you drink your drink, teh, ice, whatsoever. Uh, how many minutes that will take to finish all your iftar? Approximately 30 <laughs> plus <laughs> minus. Yes. Uh, sometimes if you eat alone, can we do ask 15 to yeah. 20 minutes? You yes, will finish yes. then if you eat alone, but the fact is with family, the friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, yes. so if you ask it alone, so it will usually take 15 to 20 minutes for you to finish everything. Okay, yes. uh, I mentioned just now the communication will tell to the brain, I'm already full. It takes 15 to 20 minutes. So uh, during your eat, eating period, uh, uh, after azan, uh, your brain have not detect you are full yet. So since you are not full yet, you eat, you eat, you eat, you eat, you eat, you eat, you eat in large portion. Just yes. Okay. So uh -huh. if you go for Margaret prayer first, and then you eat, usually it's much easier for people to control uh, amount of what they eat. They will not eat in abundance usually. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, I, I have experience. experience. Actually, I have experienced this thing. In this Ramadan, I tried to pray Maghrib first before eating the heavy meal because some of the mosques uh, do that kind of thing. They eat mm -mm. Uh, eggs and, and just drink sweet water, sweet drinks, and then go to Maghrib prayer. And then after Maghrib, uh, they take the heavy meal. And I found that that kind of things, uh, mm. usually we tend to, to feel uh full with less consuming uh yes less co consuming of food we we have we, we or how do we say <laughs> uh we we have we feel that uh, like our bed is full uh, mm -hmm. uh, compared to, compared you, to you don't eat much can brother you yes. don't eat much uh, uh, okay yes so brother Faiz, you can try uh <sighs> We, we 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 we'll see <laughs> because you know sometimes right like if the if if your if your wife cooks right and mm -mm. then like you, you don't eat you know and then like it becomes cold and then suddenly <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah, comment no comment okay, okay. <laughs> but we'll try but, we'll try uh -uh. if you want to try you you try together with your wife lah okay ah, when yes. we want to diet yeah, yeah, we do family. diet as a family. Yes, okay. together. We don't diet alone. Uh, most together. Like <laughs> we need to do together. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yes. So, uh, uh, um, uh, I think I hope that answer, Brother Mu asked how to achieve that full, how to achieve that satiety uh, without uh, in, apa, uh, 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 increasing our weight and in controlling our weight then. Okay. So, that's how I can explain to achieve weight loss. Lah, and be careful with your more. Uh, the second question, Brother Faiz asked to sustain energy. Mm. Um, I think this is uh, quite tricky. Uh. But, uh, what I can rephrase from this uh, question is uh, why during daytime, sometimes we become uh, uh, tired, lesu, what we call it, the tired and lethargic, or even sometimes during tarawih. Not even tarawih, isya prayer already like tired, everything can. <laughs> uh. Okay. So uh, it depends on what you eat during sahur and it depends on what you eat during iftar. Oh. Okay, so uh, um, scientifically, if we eat our sahur and iftar with a uh, high sugar food, okay, uh, high sugar can be your dessert, the kueh, your drinks is high sugar food, as well as uh, lots of rice. Rice also considered as sugar, right? Okay, because mm. our body will convert rice into sugar. So if you have lots of rice, if you have lots of uh, sweet drinks, lots of dessert, um, high sugar in our body, our body will become, um, I think if I get the term correctly, is sugar rush. Oh, sugar sugar rush. rush in our body will make uh, we feel sleepiness, lethargy. Okay. So uh, let's look back at your sahur and also your uh, iftar. So if um, lots in simple sugar or sweet food, sweet food lah. Sweet food is the one that is tasted sweet at your tongue. Okay. So it will give you sugar rush and you will become sleepiness and lethargic. 
So how not to uh, have this uh, sugar rush? Uh, it's good if you can eat food that uh, the sugar is, how do you say this? Uh, yeah. The sugar is released slowly in our body. Really? Sugar released slowly in our body, meaning that um, instead of, example, instead of taking one cup of Milo during sahur, Milo is uh, uh, is high in sugar because it is for energy drink. Is actually okay. Uh, you can take um, oat drinks. Oh, okay, drink. so oats. If you have white Nestem. bread, um, and Nestem, it, oats is much better. Oh. Food that is higher in fiber. Okay. okay? And you see, uh, uh, Nestem is not fibrous enough. Uh, oats is more fibrous, right? If you usually, uh, uh, if you have familiar with oats texture mm -hmm. um, like white bread roti putih white bread instead of taking white bread you take wholemeal bread wholemeal bread, wholemeal bread. okay because uh, those fiber those serat or gandum whatsoever in that uh, bread uh, it will help to release sugar slower mm -hmm. compared to take white bread sugar will release faster mm. Okay, so that is if you take uh, oats or, or roti, uh, bread. What if we take nasi again? Um, usually, if you see, uh, I recommend brown rice, but not many people eating brown rice. Like Brother Muaz, uh, buy food at, at stall, at cafe, and they don't have food. <laughs> yeah. So how to make the sugar from nasi, from rice, go slower? So the answer is you have to take with vegetables. Vegetables. Uh, okay, when we have fiber from vegetables, it's lower the sugar. Actually, that that's actually something that I'm interested in because you say like uh, sugary, I'll say uh, foods with high content of sugar, you know, they're, they're going to tend to cause sugar rush and eventually cause you to be drowsy, you know, you know during the day. Uh, I know, I think this is why, this is one myth that I don't know from i don't remember from where i learned but this is from my childhood right so the um during usually, usually before you know the 10 minutes before subuh fajar wait i, I forgot the term is it fajar uh, 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 faj imsa, uh, fajar imsa. imsa yeah imsa okay so during before, during imsa right so um you know some people have like redoxon or baroka Right, so yeah. they drink that. Yeah. Okay. So they drink that before, so so that they say like this will provide energy throughout the day. Does it make sense? Because it's redoxon is for the vitamin C, right? Yeah, yeah vitamin C. Yeah, vitamin C, so and then uh, baraka is the the habata sauda oil, yeah. if I'm yes. not mistaken. Uh, again. Uh, okay. okay, so it's actually uh, for supplement. It does not really helps in boosting your energy. Okay, it helps you to to get more nutrient because we are fasting, kan? So if you take redoxone, you get more vitamin C. Okay, and vitamin. Uh, if you want to talk vitamin for energy, it's more on vitamin B. It's not vitamin okay. C. Okay. Mm. Okay. So uh, uh, I think if you don't uh, do that practice, pun it's okay. So during that uh, near imsak time, uh, you just drink plenty of water lah to make sure your body get uh, hydration. Okay. So uh, that's that's my my answer lah. How to sustain the energy? Uh, get more fiber. Uh, roti with more fiber. Uh, if you eat rice with more fiber, vegetables. Okay, because uh, um, sometimes it will affect your focus as well. Sugar rice. Uh, when you, our brain receive more sugar, we will uh, the 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 brain thinking process will become slower as well. Mm. So that's the effect of it lah. Oh, interestingly, I think I've, I've known a lot of postgraduate students who tend to re to rely on uh, this sugar rush thing to think. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they got hyperactive, you know, and then like they have all of these ideas, but then they crash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then that's what happened usually at night, and then during the day, they all go what we call yes. like. <laughs> yes, correct. Because those sugar has, has disturbed your brain to function. Ah, so actually, like, 
Okay, um, we're talking about uh, sahur just now, right? On how what you can eat to prepare. So, I think that this is one thing that this is me personally during my degree days, right? So we're afraid of missing sahur. So more becomes sahur, or more becomes post uh, pre sahur, right? Just in case if you don't miss sahur. So how much does skipping sahur number one effect basically how you are in that day uh, during that day mm-hmm. and how does that actually affect your diet in general mm-hmm. if you skip sahur uh okay I, i i try to answer that question in in a manner of uh is it okay if we take our large more as sahur ah No, again, I think there's many students practice that way. Yeah. Is it okay to take uh, the Mu'asli like to do it? No, no, no. Is it okay? I mean, I mean, there is some kind of students that doing okay, the thing. So, there's many people practicing like that. <laughs> uh, they take large more uh, to be considered as saho. Okay. Uh, that is uh, not a very good, uh, as well as not a very good sunnah lah kan. So we said uh, to to uh, uh, delay saho as late as possible. So that is the sunnah way, alright. So if you take your large meal uh, during morning as saho, uh, that practice is I can say it is not healthy to your body because after your morning usually we will go to sleep, mm. alright. So at that moment, our body have our own biological clock. Okay, so uh, we know we have our own biological clock. Usually at 10, if you uh, for three weeks you sleep at 10, usually the next day at 10, usually you will easily feel asleep. Correct. Right. Uh, if you eat at 2 p.m. for lunch, easily at 2 p.m. next day, you will easily get hungry. That is your bi- biological clock. They already have that signal automatic. Okay, so uh, when we sleep, okay, uh, our body system usually uh, uh, function minimally. Mm. Okay, so your digestion, your your food that you eat from your stomach to go down, everything will go slower because the the fifty uh, percent shut down lah, something like that. I can say, okay. So when we have uh, food that we eat, then we go to sleep. Uh, many of the food is not well digested yet. And uh, the outcome of this, uh, usually we can see people who continuously doing this. Uh, it w- they will easily get um, uh, diabetes, hypertension, heart attack, increase in cholesterol level. Okay, so we seen this. Garu kepala dah, brother Faiz ni. We seen this, although although that person does not go to sleep. Okay, uh, many studies show uh, 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 look at the people who work in shift. Like uh, a shift worker, uh, oil and gas staff, lorry driver, uh, healthcare staff who work in shift late at night. Okay? Uh, although they don't go to sleep, they have this large meal at the middle of the night. Um, they will still have that risk of health. Uh, health risk is still the same. I see. So, so what else? If you go to sleep, again, yeah, it's more detrimental. Lah. So that's why we encourage to push your sahur much later before subuh. So uh, that's mean if we didn't go to sleep immediately after we eat heavy meal, it's also not healthy. Correct, Wadu Muaz, you got it right. Mm. Because why? Because our our system will working slower at the night. Yes, how? yes, yes. Because we are uh, naturally by fitrah, Allah does not design us to be nocturnal. Okay, you understand a nocturnal? Nocturnal is a a a a a bukan at night. Yes, like animals can animals that active at night. So they are nocturnal. Nocturnal, but we human Allah does not design us to be nocturnal. That's why uh, Ahmad Saleh call it the the the, the Westerners people call it as biological clock. Um, but the, that's how I rephrase it lah. It's not our fitrah. Uh, it's hmm. not our fitrah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We are fitrah. Yeah. Hashtag I am. Hashtag I am. Did you do it? Yes, all right. Uh, uh, I just would like to add about sahur again. Okay. Uh, uh, many people say that I, okay. Usually sahur, uh, we encourage people to have like a complete meal, lah. Uh, rice, uh, ayam, uh, fish, uh, chicken with vegetables, and like like you eating for your lunch, example. Uh, 
Okay. okay, but many people when we uh, encourage advocate that uh, that kind of eating pattern, they will say, "I cannot lah, uh, or uh, uh, still still sleepy. How can I eat that much?" Can uh, yeah, they need, need to cook? Can yeah, uh, can. So uh, I learned this from uh, one of my uh, colleague lah, um, uh, which is uh, we call it uh, him Ustad as well. Uh, he said that uh, the the recommendation, the sunnah is to delay your sahur, to delay eating sahur, but not to delay waking up. Uh, so yes. you have to wake up early. If you sahur at 5.30 and you wake up at 5.20, of course you are still sleepy and your body still not, not do not care to eat bone at that time. If you uh, 5.20 and you eat 5.30. So if you wake up at 4, at 5, and you perform all those uh, um, uh, apa, tahajud, qiyam, reading Quran, qiyam ulal, yes, the mu'az. So uh, believe me, if you even wake up at 5, you do perform all the solat, tasbih, tahajud, whatsoever. At 5.30, you take your sahur, you crave for food. Interesting. Okay. So uh, the sunnah is delay eating sahur, not delay waking up for sahur. So I like that recommendation from our colleague. I think yeah. that is very true. Okay, all right. Okay, that, no, 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 that, that's, that, that, that's interesting. I think like what I see here is that, you know, like to have some activities maybe before you do your, before sahur. Mm -hmm. right? Because like for us Muslims, of course, we have tahajud, we have mm -hmm. jamulayil, we have, you know, we can like read the Quran mm -hmm. uh, before we actually go to sahur. But I think like, I think because we have a few uh, non-Muslims in IUM as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then I, I, I always observe some of them, like they like to, they like to like do exercises before they, their meal, you know. I don't know why, but I think like from what you explained just now, then that actually ex that actually answers this thought that I was wondering, mm. like why would they do that? <laughs> you know, you just eat lah. Why do you need to go, you know, like walk around campus just to eat, right? Mm. Okay. So um, coming back about Sahur just now, right? Mm. Uh, this is from what I've heard from my friends. See, they, they always try to avoid something like Maggi because they say that it'll make them feel dehydrated during the day. Is it true? Like, is that, are there foods that will make you more dehydrated? Okay, uh, I can, I, I kind of agree with your friend. Okay, uh, I think what that person is experiencing is not dehydrated. Uh, that person experiencing thirsty. Perhaps it's may maybe uh, more thirsty, more thirst than a usual day, okay? Because uh, maggi, uh, that instant noodle is actually uh, high sodium food, high salt food, okay? So if you eat high salty food, salty food, uh, salty food, <clears throat> uh, our body will demand for more water, okay? Oh. So uh, you can try to experiment if you eat like uh, karepe or chips potato chips, karepe, or suddenly one day you eat fast food. Fast food is also considered as high salt food. Uh, usually your body will demand for more water. Okay, uh, because the body want to clear out all those uh, excess salt in your blood. Nah. It's ah. actually clear out, nah. So how to clear out? Yeah, the body want to instruct you to urinate, to pass urine. Uh, but uh, that's why they, uh, the body demand more water. I so see. yes, uh, we don't encourage salty food during sahur because throughout the day, you will be craving for water, 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 water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, thank you. I think that, okay, that, that, that's a good, that's a good advice because I feel like, you know, being student, right, Moaz, you want to save budget, maybe it comes in yes. four ringgit and 59 cents for, during sale, right? Uh, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, but uh, I'm the student that I'm that one kind of student that I like to eat me. I like I love to eat Maggie, but I I'm very lazy to do to prepare the Maggie. Have <laughs> to wait two minutes. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I think I uh, I prefer to buy, but 
if I'm buying foods, I will not buying like instant noodle or Maggi or like something like that because I think it's not uh it will not fulfill our my my stomach my my belly. I think okay, we okay. if like some kinds of five ringgit we can we can get uh what one plate of rice mm -hmm. also with chicken. Uh, so I prefer rice with chicken than Maggi. Correct, correct. That is a good choice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 why Brother Muaz feel um, uh, the stomach much happy with rice and chicken? Uh, yeah. Because for our body to feel uh, satiety, feel enough, kan? rasa kenyang, satiety, uh, uh, rasa puas. Okay. Um, it's actually the role of protein. Okay. You know protein? Protein is our lauk-lauk. Okay. It's chicken, fish, eggs. Okay. So if student get usually if they prepare Maggi at Mahala, it's just Maggi kosong, plain Maggi yes. again. Is mm. there any protein sources? No. Okay. So that's why you don't feel enough. Okay. If you eat rice or or uh, Maggi lah. I don't endorse taking Maggi for sahur. But if you yeah. take, uh, you have protein that will help your stomach to feel uh, satiety. Uh, the protein helps to feel satiety. The carbohydrate uh, does not come for satiety longer. And sometimes for sahur, I think uh, uh, if we take a uh, rice, it's also kind of heavy meal, and we tend to be to feel sleepy after we taking the sahur. Before mm. we pray, we, we pray subuh, we pray fajar. Mm. We also already sleepy if we mm. take rice, mm. and mm. that's why uh, right now I'm taking for sahur. I'm taking like uh, a little like like a sandwich. Like that, uh, for my sahur. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, I think it back to the uh, too much sugar that from the rice, yeah, uh, can yes. make, uh, we feel sleepy. Yes. Mm. Uh, well, once <laughs> you have a lot of routine that I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> familiar with. But yeah. it's just digesting, digesting. Try to, uh, try to digest. <laughs> no, no, trying to remember how my student life was. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so um, I think like one thing lah um, that perhaps we we'll talk about how much right. It's it's probably be easier. There's a lot of incentive, you know, for us to lose weight during Ramadan. Uh, let's also talk about maybe the risks that exist there with losing weight during Ramadan. Like I, 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 I personally think right. Like if you're trying to lose weight, of course Ramadan would be a perfect opportunity of doing that. But of course there will be some who things like, for example, uh, you 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 already cannot eat, you already cannot drink. Why you want to go? You know, go to the gym or go swimming. You know, like uh, to to just to, to lose weight. Isn't that more dangerous? Mm -hmm. So maybe Sister Amira, can you like uh, explain to us about that? Okay. So, uh, yeah, some people would like, uh, really would like to use this opportunity to lose lots of weight can, during Ramadan. Uh, but, uh, of course, there are risks, especially if you just go for dieting, you just control eating. Uh, I think that is uh, less risk. But uh, the risk that we are concerned now is if people who want to vigorously lose weight and they start doing exercises during Ramadan. Okay, so uh, one of the risks is, uh, of course, you will become a dehydration. Lah. You can mm. easily become dehydrated. Okay, so uh, like for now in Kuantan, we are on extreme uh, hot weather. Uh, okay, yeah. so uh, I think that is not a very recommended uh, period of time for us to uh, exercise during Ramadan. Okay, so uh, we are afraid if people get dehydrated or heat stroke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. And uh, what else? The risk. Uh, other risk is if um they because they really want to lose weight, they skip sahur. Can uh, so they can easily get lethargic, or they can become low sugar in their blood. Uh, we call it hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia, it will become your your body will start shivering. You will shivering. Although in hot weather, you will shivering. And then sweating, although in aircon you will sweat, and then you can become fainted, lah, unconscious. Oh. Okay, 
So uh, those are the risks lah that we are um, looking uh, uh, apa a concern to avoid. I mean like the, about the low blood sorry okay. low, low sugar thing right. So mm-hmm. basically like uh, what what if for example you're diabetic right? Diabetic mm-hmm. means that you have high sugar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah high high mm-hmm. sugar right. So mm-hmm. are there any like if you try to lose weight being a diabetic, for example, mm-hmm. right? Would that be something of a risky thing to do? Yeah, I mean, like, you have a totally different condition than other people, right? So, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe some of our postgraduate students, are, I mean, like, not all postgraduate students are as, 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 as childlike as us and was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, not not many postgraduate students who can still have put two in front of their age, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe we can also consider those who are with some health conditions. Right? Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. So uh, if people fasting, uh, especially those with diabetes, they are very risky group, lah. So first of all, you have to talk to your doctor. You have to talk to your pharmacy. So they can look at your medication so that uh, your doctor can monitor. Some diabetic patients, we don't allow them to fast. We don't allow, we're not recommend it. We don't allow at all. Okay. So because it can be very dangerous for them. So, uh, um, so uh, uh, we don't allow them to fasting. Uh, and so uh, meaning that we also don't allow them to do exercise. Like if they are fasting, we don't allow them to do vigorous exercise. Ah. So because they are very high risk people. Oh, okay. This is the first time actually I heard about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's 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 okay. I mean, like, is, is uh, this something uh, you must? Uh, I mean, what's uh why the the people that have diabetes uh, restricted to yeah? Mm-hmm. What's the signs? Okay. Okay, so uh, those people diabetic that we don't allow to fast is they frequently having hypoglycemia episode. Okay, uh, for example, uh, during uh, during the month of Rajab, Shaban, then uh, one month, two months before before Ramadan, they frequently having hypo. Hypo meaning blood sugar is low. Okay, so that one we don't allow for them to fast. Uh, or also during Rajab or Shaban, they frequently have high blood glucose. The reading is always high. Um, okay, so that one also we don't allow them to fast because uh, if they if the blood glucose is high, um, they easily will go to diabetic ketoacidosis condition, whereby uh, the blood glucose will uh, increase uh, high and then uh, it will give shift in the met- metabolism and they will become comatose. They will become coma. Uh, okay, so it's very dangerous now. Okay, so that's why uh, when I deal with my diabetic people, uh, I encourage them uh, one month or two months before Ramadan, I encourage them to start uh, puasa sunat. Mm. Uh, okay, so train. when you puasa sunat, train yourself. If during puasa sunat, your blood glucose drops, then you can easily break your fast. Because many our uh, client, makci, pakci, uh, during Ramadan fasting, when they, their blood glucose drop, they become shivering just now, uh, they re- refuse to break their fast because they say, this is Ramadan fasting. I don't want to break my fast. Okay, so uh, tips here before you go for Ramadan fasting, train yourself first. Okay, uh, see how your blood glucose goes. Okay, then talk to your doctor. Sometimes it needs insulin adjustment. Sometimes it needs a uh, uh, medication reduction to okay. prepare you for fasting. Okay, mm. I mean like I know this is wait, this is still about weight loss, but then at the end of the day, I think like uh, perhaps this is an encouragement, I believe, for all postgraduate students, especially those who, who are watching this, to please check your get yourself checked. Correct. You know, if you are in, if you suddenly find out that you're diabetic, you know, like mm-hmm. it's not, it's not to say that you get, you get a pass to not fast, but rather, you know, we have to consider. So there are assessment. The doctor will yeah. will will take all those uh screening process and whether you are fit or not. 
I see. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, it's good uh, advice, Brother Faiz, for uh, everyone to get yourself checked because nowadays diabetes is not the the disease for uh, uh, young uh, uh, older people. It's not at the age of 60, pain chin later on, you get diabetes. It's coming in the early age, as early as 25 years old. Mm. So if you want to talk about the, the data for diabetes people in Malaysia, uh, for every five people, if we have five people, one usually diabetic. Mm. Okay, I don't have diabetes. Must you have diabetes? Alhamdulillah. Don't have. Okay, so that's three. We need to have another <laughs> two people to join us. <laughs> okay, and to say that is very common, diabetes in Malaysia. Uh, mm. uh, okay. All right. Yeah, that, that's, that's totally new information here. Thank you so <laughs> much, I think, uh, Sister Amira. And, oh, wow, look at the time. <laughs> we talk so long, even even though this is Ramadan, right? Uh, yeah. I, 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 are you guys thirsty right now? No. Okay, so far, Alhamdulillah, good. Okay, so far, yes, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but the Mu'az is already... Uh, no, no, when is, I'm okay. When is <laughs> 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 so, maybe, like, let, let, let's try to, like, we, we talk a lot, right? We talk a lot about weight loss, we talk about energy, we talk about the kinds of food that we eat talk about our eating behavior and we also managed to dive a bit about you know getting to know about ourselves our body composition the ideal one that we want as well as if for example you have some health factor that you need to get yourself check on before you decide to uh, not just lose weight but even you know do fasting itself right so i feel like Okay, let, maybe we can try to figure out what are the you know, the key takeaways, you know, especially for our listeners here today. Uh, what are the things that you should do if you want to safely and effectively lose weight uh, during this Ramadan period? Maybe I'll ask Sister Mira for that first. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, safely yeah, to achieve weight loss during Ramadan. Uh, number one, if you go to bazaar, just bring just enough money. Uh, if, uh, if you bring 50 ringgit in your pocket, you know what you will end up with. But all buzzer yeah. have you up pay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, uh... Okay, so then you left your phone in your car. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think that's so, the best. <laughs> that's the best way. Hmm. Yes, thank you, Radu <laughs> <laughs> leave your so, phone, leave your wallet, and only bring cash. Yeah, yes. uh, only bring 10, 10 to 15 ringgit, or, or even 5 ringgit. <laughs> Correct, Brother Mu'an. Okay, so uh, uh, bring just enough money. Lah. Okay, Thank and then uh, 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 fight your nafsu, go with your logical akal that I only need this. Uh, I, yes. Inshallah, I am uh, full for iftar. Mm. Yes. yes. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, I'm because sorry. We need, yeah, <laughs> we need to we need to trust uh, with uh, Allah because Allah says that we have uh, for the fasting people they have berkah in their in their break fasting. Uh, if we only eat, only we, if we only eat uh, very little and we just need uh, in our mind we we pray and uh, we pray we fasting only for Allah. Only just like a little bit of meal, we already will 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 be full. Ah, mm-hmm. that's the burqa. That's the mm-hmm. burqa uh, on our iftar, on our fasting. Because I'm because I'm my friends. Can, uh, okay, who's uh, going to speak? Who wants to speak? Okay, uh-huh. this is coming up. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Uh, so I, I don't rem- remember whether this is a hadith or like wise people saying, uh, food for one uh, can be enough for two people. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Hadith, yeah. Uh, Where I there is some hadith, but I, I forgot the the uh-huh. what the the yeah. uh. So 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 trust uh, trust yourself. Inshallah, this food that I buy uh, will be enough. Uh, or, yes. or, or like when I'm cooking, inshallah, this will be enough. Because if not, we always say, if, what if that you cook? What if not enough? What if not enough? And then we cook more, yes. more, more. Uh, inshallah, yes. because I think how how can one a food for one for a person can be enough for two person? It's yes. back to berkah. What Brother Mu'as Yes, 
if we eat together with our friends especially uh we, we will have a berkah for our food masyaallah thank you so much <laughs> ustaz muas <laughs> 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 so um, I think that's all for today. Uh, of course, thank you so much, Sister Amira, for joining us today. I, I think that before, before I think, I, if I may ask, how do we? I, I see that this is a clinic diet, right? The kula like her science. This is open for all students. Yeah, it's open for all public. Uh, you can find us at Instagram, Facebook, also YouTube. Uh, oh. You just uh, uh, type clinic diet, Elias, K-A-H-S, and uh, then you will find us. Lah. Then we we provide you with the link tree if you want to know more about us, if you want to book appointment with us, if you would like to contact us to have further collaboration, you can just simply go to the link tree. Hmm, okay, I think like that's a really good uh, contact information that we need because I believe that if after this, you know, maybe if one of our listeners, our viewers would like to, you know, fully commit 100%, not just during Ramadan, you know, ideal life, ideal weight. Uh, they want, yeah, it's the uh, spirit. Yeah, that's the spirit, right? They, they want all, they want to lose weight. They want to get their ideal body. Maybe they can contact uh, clean, clean Diet Cast uh, to get some assistance. So, for, of course, thank you so much, Sister Amira. For joining um, with us today, uh, Brother Faiz. Ah, yes, Brother Faiz. I think uh, I want to share the key component, uh, the key takeaways for today. Oh, okay. Uh, Brother Faiz, to share. Okay, I thought you were going share just now. But... No, 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 no. I mean because because I'm uh jot jot down the notes for oh, today, okay. so I will read uh just as simple. Okay, number one, okay. Sister Mira said that uh. Uh, just like Sister Mira said earlier, we need to save our budgets. We need to uh, bring like a little amount in our, to our bazaar to avoid uh, what we call uh, membazir. Overspending. Avoid, yeah, to avoid overspending. And the point number two is uh, we need to have a realistic uh, loss weight uh, because Sister Mira said we can, uh, in a week, we only can lose weight half kilo or till kilo 0.5 until 1 kilo only per week so that's uh, leave oh, us uh, like three to four kilo maybe for one month realistically i don't know mm-hmm. uh, yeah months, and sister i mean also said that uh, realistically we can for 80 80 kg 80 kilogram people uh, they can lose their weight eight kilo in six months uh, okay, and the uh, what? And the third point, uh, we need to uh, take our sahur uh, uh, in order to yeah, have the optimum energy in our days. We need to reduce our sugar uh, in our sahur. Uh, instead of taking white bread, we need to take a uh, whole bread. Uh, instead of we only taking full rice, we also need to take vegetables. Uh, to make the sugar flowing uh, slowly uh, to, avoid our, we, to avoid we feel sleepy and tired uh, uh, to avoid sugar rush uh, like what sister Amira said uh, and also avoid uh, some some kind of salty food like maggi high sodium food right uh, because it will make us very thirsty for the whole day uh, okay then and the last thing is about the diabetics. Diabetics people is they have the high sugar pressure or low sugar pressure. Diabetics people. The, uh, it's high, not right? pressure. Blood glucose glucose yeah, in blood. Yeah. Uh, uh, when when we when we take blood from our finger, then uh, it will measure how much blood and uh, how much sugar in your blood. Uh, the content okay. of sugar in your blood. So sometimes they can become both at one day, they become very low because they don't want to eat. And sometimes they become very high. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And the one last point is, do we need to strictly exercise? Uh, if, because we have a strict, uh, strict our food, our consuming for sahur and breakfasting, uh, is there a need uh, to do an exercise? Uh, like jogging or swimming just like brother Faiz is asking 
So the answer is, uh, is it is not necessarily to do exercise, right? Mm, uh, yeah. apa, we, we can consider tarawih as part of our oh. exercise, physical activity. Uh, but if you want to uh, venture on exercise, you can do it like walking slowly. Mm. Slowly. Okay. Nah, don't do vigorous like uh, a sprinting. You see, Ramadan is the only period where you can change ibadah to exercise. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm, you know, 23 Traweh, sorry, 20 Traweh, Witir, yes. and then your Chamulay. Yes, I think. Chamulay, correct, uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, Sadako, Rizati uh, Quran. Uh, Taubat, you know. Yes. <laughs> because it will multiply our, what we call, our pahala. Pahala, mm -hmm. what is it? It's pahala. Pahala. Also in English, in English. Reward, reward. Reward, reward, yeah, yeah, reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. reward. MashaAllah. Uh, because uh, because <laughs> Ramadan is only the chance that our ibadah, our, our work will multiply the rewards. Mm. And inshallah, this thing will help us to reach uh, Jannah to Firdaus, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, amin. <laughs> okay, with that, Thank you so much. Okay, but okay. I just have to say thank you, Sister Amira, as well. Thank you, Brother Muaz, for our first ever episode of our PBJSS podcast. I hope this is going to be beneficial for all of you, our listeners and our viewers today. Hope that all of you have a wonderful uh, Ramadan, have a wonderful plan, you know, wonderful diet. And please, please, please do remember, even as much as you want to lose your weight, you know, do it properly, do it safely, do it effectively. And yes. inshallah, all of us can reap benefits both spiritually and physically during this yes. Ramadan period. And may we not succumb to the temptations of Idil Fitri and its rendang and ketupat. Yes. <laughs> yes. That would be nice. <laughs> one, last thing, one last thing, one last thing reminder. One last because, thing. Uh, one last thing <laughs> because people uh people like to uh, there is some kind of people that like to skip their their sahur uh, i just want to give a reminder because there is a one hadith uh called rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh tasahharu fa inna fi sahuri baraka uh, uh the meaning is uh we need to take sahur because in the sahur uh, they uh we, the sahur have the baraka Masya Ambillah uh, bersahurlah kerana dalam bersahur itu adanya berkah. Ha. Kalau tak sahur, mm -hmm. kita makan sebelum tu je macam-macam lah jadi tak sehat semua kan. Ha. Uh, true, true. Yes. <laughs> yes. Alright, thank, thank you so much. Okay, Bada Muaz. Bada Muaz is always like on the note. Bada Muaz A+. Plus. A+. Plus. He <laughs> wants <laughs> to share. He <laughs> wants to lose weight. InsyaAllah. Inshallah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. So with that, inshallah, we'll see you again during our next episode of PGSS podcast. With that, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay.